Of we're coming to you live from the VIP lounge at the Argyle International Airport. Uh, the idea was to have uh, basically covered the inaugural touchdown of the Virgin Atlantic flight. Uh, American Airlines came in a little earlier today. And you see Caribbean Airlines on the ground. Uh, having not been able to do just that, we are now awaiting a media briefing.
Prime Minister, Mrs. Gonzalez, Honorable Minister of Tourism, High Commissioner, British High Commissioner, Miss Hannah Swift from Virgin Atlantic, specially invited guest, Chairwoman of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Tourism Authority, members of staff of the Ministry of Tourism, Tourism Authority, Agan International Airport, other specially invited guests, members of the press, a warm good afternoon. This has been something that we've been long awaited. The, the landing of our first direct flight from the United Kingdom or Europe, whichever one you want to call it. But we are so happy, and this has been long in the making. The negotiations have taken years. And uh, when I was a member of IADC in the construction of this airport, we all know, many of us would know the contribution that, that, that the diaspora made from the United Kingdom and how big they were in helping us in the construction of this airport. But as I said before, this is not a press conference where we have much time. So without further ado, let me introduce the Caribbean manager for Virgin Atlantic. Um, please. No, okay. mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me in your beautiful country. We are absolutely you, thrilled to be here today on this inaugural flight. And our twice weekly service, this is in St. Anna Grenadines, has commenced at long last. Um, and we're thrilled that this now solidifies that long lasting relationship and will be bringing lots of tourists to a beautiful island. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amy. As I said, this has been long in the making and long in the coming, I think, and I can be corrected if I'm wrong. This, this Virgin Atlantic flight is our largest, largest flight to come into St. Vincent and Grenadines, taking passengers. So it is indeed an exciting day for us here in St. Vincent and Grenadines. Um, when we signed this contract, we had a different minister in place, Minister Sessman. But Minister James has carried this mantle quite well and has been quite influential in terms of where we've headed with Virgin since then. So I welcome Minister James to the podium to give some remarks. Thank you, Master uh, of Ceremonies. We recognize the Honorable Prime Minister themselves. Let me also recognize Steve Moore, the British President High Commissioner. Also, Hannah Swift is here with us, country manager for Virgin, European manager. Other specially invited guests and persons who are listening or viewing via the various uh, media platforms. This is quite an exciting opportunity for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We welcome Virgin Atlantic, very first transatlantic flight to St. Vincent and the Grenadines since we've completed the construction of the Argyle International Airport. And I want to say that we've really had some challenging periods. During the construction of the Argyle International Airport, we went through one of the challenging period in terms of a global recession. The world stood still, but the perseverance of our Prime Minister, our esteemed Prime Minister, who had the vision to conceptualize and to move ahead with the construction of this Argyle International. We said we're going to build it. And many persons were in awe and they had reservations, but we said we will build it and they will come. Now it's a global pandemic. We are also experiencing challenges. Wall again stood, has stand still. But here it is that today we have two of the major leading airlines in the world taxiing on the runway of Argyle International Airport, American Airlines, and of course, Virgin Atlantic. Next week, 
this same time will also be historic. We would add to the fleet of international carriers the return of the midweek flight of Caribbean Airlines to this destination. So we're likely to have three major international carriers on the runway of Argyle International Airport the same time next week. And this is why we're grappling with the challenge of the COVID-19 pandemic. St. Vincent continues to show the world that we're determined, resilient, and we are here to do business. We're open, we work within the confines of the protocols, health protocols, but we welcome visitors to our destination and we welcome residents back home to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This partnership with Virgin Atlantic indeed is a strategic one because it puts St. Vincent on the Grenadines right at the doorstep of the European market. It's not only persons traveling from London or Manchester or Oxford who will go to Heathrow to take a flight to St. Vincent and Grenadines, but persons in Italy, in France, in Germany, in Holland, other persons will utilize the Heathrow, London, to Argyle, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines Gateway to journey to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. As Glenn indicated, it has been a very long and tedious journey in getting Virgin here. I jokingly mentioned to Hannah a while ago, I understood that St. Vincent and the Grenadines so far seems to be leading in bookings to the Caribbean territories out of Heathrow. And I indicated to her, well, Virgin should have been here a long time, not just now. But much credit to the hard work of the CEO of the Tourism Authority and his staff. They have worked to negotiate and to get all of the necessary modalities in place so we can have the Virgin flight here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I want to also commend the resident British commissioner on Monday following discussions and negotiations with the Aeronautical Services Authority in the United Kingdom. We signed an MOU and the Air Service Agreement to ensure that this flight was able to take place today. I want to commend him and this team for all the hard work and relations. I just want to briefly add that we oftentimes talk about tourism numbers. And when you look at St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we are an emerging tourism destination. Prior to the oper operationalization of Argyle International Airport, we had absolutely no international direct access to this destination. And that's an important link in getting visitors here in terms of our tourism product, getting businesses here and investors here to St. Vincent and the Grenadines as part of overall economic development. Another deficiency, which we are currently during this period of COVID, COVID, working steadfastly to address, is that issue of room stock. You can have 10 international carriers on your runway, but if you don't have anywhere to put these visitors when they come to your destination, you will have a challenge. And that's why within the next two or three years, as we have started to open, even before that, you will see a number of hotels currently under construction looking to have their grand opening. And I speak to Beaches by Sanders International Resorts. 
I speak to Royal Mill adding another 300 room facility. The government, is, we have already embarked on the construction of the Marriott Hotel at Mountain, private Mountain, and also the Holiday Express. And we have a number for the smaller boutique luxury hotels which are springing up. And we will safely add in over another thousand plus rooms to this destination ahead of 2025. And with the construction of this airport, in just under five years, shy of five years, we were successful in ensuring we have direct air access to all of our major source markets. Virgin, Heathrow, London, American Airlines, Miami, Caribbean Airlines, JFK, to Argyle, Air Canada, Toronto, to Argyle International Airport. This is no small feat for a small island who, less than five days ago, didn't have an international airport. And I want persons who are involved in the tourism industry in particular, and those who are interested in investing in St. Vincent and take note of what we're doing. And we're building capacity, we're putting in place the resources, and we're doing so during a period of uncertainty in COVID. And while the world will stand still, we will build and build it, and certainly they will come. I want to thank persons who took the time to be here with us today to witness this historic occasion. And I want to also extend my gratitude to the team at Virgin Atlantic for partnering with us in this very important move. And we welcome you once again, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. I don't think there's much more I can add to what he said in terms of investment. Um, one of the things that we are looking at is, is that of American Airlines coming out of North Carolina, Charlotte, Charlotte North Carolina, Jet Blue possibly out of Boston. Um, but all of those things, and welcome the Virgin crew here. Thank you, welcome. <laughs> um, so let me introduce the man who's responsible for all of this, um, whose vision saw us construct this beautiful, beautiful airport, um, whose creativity allowed us to do it. I don't think many people realize how important this structure, AIA, has been, especially during this pandemic. So without further ado, let me introduce the honor of the Prime Minister, Dr. Alton Sarsipur. Chairman, please proceedings. Carlos James, Minister, and very happy to have His Excellency Steve Moore, the British representative here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Hannah Schiff of Virgin, um, the Chair of Tourism Authority, and we're very happy to have the Virgin ladies and the Virgin gentlemen. So I've, so I've been told. <laughs> um, permit me, I'm, I'm told I can speak without the mask because I'm several feet away from you and I'm vaccinated. So I'm unlikely to do any transmission. Um, I, I begin by saying amen to everything which has been said, which I believe Pastor Bhutan in the, in the Hebrew language, is simply saying, I agree with you. Amen. I agree with everything which has been said. That means I don't have to talk much longer. I am always reminded at times like these of the classic definition of faith in the book of Hebrews. As I understand it, Faith involves two things. The knowledge of what 
is not yet seen. And the realization of that which is foreseen. Because you may foresee something and it's not realized and you may foresee it because of faith. And you will have knowledge of that which is not yet seen. That's why we have knowledge of Jesus Christ. But the book of James teaches us that faith without works is dead, is useless. And in the Argyle International Airport and with Virgin Atlantic, we have conjoined faith and works. And what have we produced today? Immense joy. There's a happiness across this land. And I am personally overjoyed. When many years ago the first small plane landed here, I kissed the ground. No with Virgin. I am. And I'm very I'm very grateful for that. The people of St. Vincent are very but it's the nature of life and living that once you have achieved much you can't rest on your laurels you're doing good but we can do better and there's something called COVID it's a pandemic Virgin is, is likely to have been here a year earlier were it not for the pandemic We have to have everybody who is working at Argyle International Airport. From the cleaners, the security, all to the technical positions, to the highest level of the CEO. Customs, immigration, everybody. You have got to be vaccinated. It is, the vaccine is safe. It is available. It is the best tool in the toolbox. Let us be vaccinated. Because the traveler who is coming in, by and large, vaccinated. Because the numbers in the UK, I have read, Boris has done a pretty good job. You're about 80 or so percent. Um, Joe Biden has done fairly well. And Trudeau ran an election on vaccinate and they're doing quite well and those are the major source markets they want to know when the traveler the traveler wants to know that when he or she's coming when i come to Argyle international everybody around me is vaccinated and when i go to the hotel the persons who are taking my bags the persons who are settling me into the room who are bringing me a drink those who sing into you a reggae song, nobody sing anymore Yellow Bird. That's in the old days. Yellow Bird is the old, you know, we sing in Bob Marley now. We want to know everybody is vaccinated. People at the market, and that is something I want to stress here very, very much. We can't shoot ourselves in the foot. We have been able to plan for certain things and we have achieved them but we have more things to do and I thank you Hannah and I want you to convey the principles your principles our gratitude I know this is not a money as the old Californian says no money no love so you have to get a little money and you have to make some. And we have a love. We have a good relationship. This airport was opened on Valentine's Day in 2017. Love was in the air. And love is in the air now. We approach it. And I want to thank you very much. And God bless you as you are about your work. Glenn, I'm very happy that you have been able to accomplish this on your team. 
I congratulate you. Your father will be very proud of you. And I'm proud of you and I love you very much. And let us continue to go from strength to strength. Thank you. Is there a Vincentian who is a crew member? Who is that? Let me see. Come forth. Come forth, young man. <laughs> your father's speaker. Now that you're coming closer to me, let me put on back my mask. <laughs> Come along. What, what's your name? Um, yeah. Come closer. What, what's your name? Yeah. Turn around and let them see you. From where? Yeah. Back. Who's your mommy? Who's your mommy? Yes, yes, yes. Many, many years as well. So, what do you do? Yes, mommy. Yes, Very, very good. I'm oh, very good. But I'm happy that you are there. Me too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, you are getting a picture of this. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Flag. Yes, as you can see, the crew is holding the Vinci flag, and they, they were quite proud of it when they left Heathrow this morning. I have, I have to join them. I want to be with the Virgin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think on that note, Minister, I think you should go. You should go, ahead. You should go ahead. On that note, thank you all for coming. It's been great. We support it. Thank you so much. I know you're all right. I'm <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
celebrate the inaugural touchdown of the Virgin Atlantic flight here on St. Vincent. We see American Airlines uh, preparing to take off. Mr. Minister, this must be a very, very proud moment, man. It's quite, quite an exciting opportunity for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, very first transatlantic flight to Argyle International Airport. And, and what is remarkable about this is that in just under five years, we were able to secure having an airline, an international airline coming from all of the major source markets. We're talking about Miami, we're, um, American Airlines, um, New York, Cal, uh, Toronto, we have um, uh, Canadian Airlines and we have coming out of the UK, Virgin Atlantic. And I'm, I'm right now looking at 
beyond the out, out at the, the tarmac and, and looking at persons possibly boarding very soon. Uh, but it, it's really an exciting feeling. And I think that what we can do from here on is just to build capacity as a tourism product. Um, investors are light enough to come here to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, their persons were excited about coming. In fact, what what the numbers are showing is that during the booking for the last quarter of this year so far, St. Vincent is outpacing all of the other Caribbean islands in terms of booking from London Heathrow to, to the Caribbean. And that's, that's a tremendous feat for a country with an airport that has just started operation under five years. Um, it's the first flight in, and we're doing some exciting things here. So we, we're, we're looking to continuously develop on this, and of course, we now have to continue full pace ahead in terms of adding room stock, building out all of the hotels and having them completed in under three years, because we're looking at post-COVID. Um, what is likely to, to take place, the numbers are showing that strategically um, from the polling, there are people who have a pent-up sort of energy and wants to travel. 75% um, of Americans in a Gallup poll, they're saying they're eager to travel, they want to get out of their homes. Um, the European market, there are persons also who are eager to travel because COVID during the lockdown has, has placed a tremendous burden on people. They want to get out, they want to travel. So we have to get our room stock up um, in comparison with other islands um, and to ensure that we are globally competitive and two of the hurdles which we have to cross is get an international airport. We've been successful in doing that. And the second hurdle is adding room stock so we can facilitate the movement of people here. And, and it's a tremendous undertaking from all of the, the, the participants in this exercise. We've been doing fantastically well in ensuring that we get um, all of the major airlines here to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And there are a few more we have to get under our belt and we're, we're going to continue pushing hard to ensure that uh, we, we succeed in doing that. But Today's a good day for St. Vincent. Next week, it's historic because we also had have added to the, the runway. Um, and that's American taking off right there now. Next week, we will have American, Virgin, and Caribbean Airlines all at the same time taxiing on this runway. And, you know, big things to come here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and I'm looking forward to the, the excitement surrounding air travel, the movement of people, also the tourism, cruise tourism. I'm looking forward to that happening this year and a tremendous undertaking from everybody. I'm really grateful for all the support in religion. I know you've timelined the, the room stock to, to, to about under three years in terms of full completion. Are you satisfied with the progress to date as, as it relates to the, the development at Diamond? Um, uh, well, Holiday Inn, Express Inn? All of the major construction that has taken place now, we've had challenges. Um, partly due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but we, I would safely say we're all on target um, in terms of the, the timelines which we're expecting to have all of these facilities in. Um, some of them are ahead of, will, will be ahead of the, that three-year um, target, for instance. Um, the, the, the Royal Mill, they're, they're going full pace ahead. Um, La View loves to receive the suites. They have completed their, their, their hotel or the restoration work. Beaches, they're looking to start. Um, beaches Resort by Sanders. Um, in a few um, months from now, we can see active work on the ground from, from beaches. And Marriott, a private, a private mountain, we're hoping to see a lot of work there um, in the not too distant future. I, I can say, at least by 2025, we should have all of these um, facilities completed. And it augurs well for us as a tourism product. You, you cannot really compare numbers. With, with other islands, if you don't have the capacity or the facilities to deal with um, being globally competitive, and that's an air, international airport which we've only completed under five years, in brand recognition, internationally branded hotels on mainland, and movement of people. And that those two components, when put together, we will see in a very short period of time, um, our numbers moving far upwards, you know, from rival in any other Caribbean island. But remember, St. Vincent and the Grenadines has been voted the best Caribbean island. Our diversity, our people, and we have a quality product here. Um, we have to enhance it, we have to develop it, and that's what it's essentially what we're doing. A lot of hard work, but we're getting it done. And we're getting it done during the downturn of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
I, I know your focus is, is tourism in the main, but um, you, you, you also signed a, an MOU with, with the, the, the British High Com Commission uh, very recently. What does that augur in terms of um, cargo, in terms of agricultural produce, for example, moving out of St. Vincent in, into the UK? And that, that's important because the MOU and the Air Service Agreements facilitate movement not only of people and airlines, but also uh, movements of good, goods and, and services that will generate from, from, from the airlines operating. I often sit to farmers in the constituency of North Newark where I'm representing. You can literally go to Richmond, harvest your, 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 your machine and tanias or your fresh fish out of the Richmond Sea. Clean it, package it, have it at Argyle in a matter of hours, and within a few hours, it will be on all of the major markets across the world. In four hours, you can, you can have a fish from the seashore here on mainland or in the Grenadines, or you can have this produce from the ground, package it, and within four hours you have it in New York, in Toronto, in Miami, and now in London. And that is something that we have to capitalize on, obviously. And we have to look at moving in the direction of, of, of lowering our import bill and facilitating greater export of our produce and, and services here from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And this is something that, that that air service agreement, not just only for tourism, but also across the, the, the economic belt, um, trade and, and, and movement of goods and so on. And we're looking to see, um, hopefully, that, that we, we, we can see some positive uptick in relation to that. All right. Thank you so much for chatting with us. No Mr. problem. Listener. All right. Lessons. Of course, as we wind things up here inside uh, this inaugural touchdown, man, that's what I like to call it, of the Virgin Atlantic flight. Stand by, let's get a quick word with tourism CEO. This is about how it is. This is not about political parties. This isn't, I'm sorry, some church leaders might get angry. This is not about religion. I've yet to see one religion that says one should not get vaccinated. Right? This is about common sense. Every one of us has been vaccinated at some point in our My mother is going to be vaccinated. It's vaccinated. Nothing is happening. I'm not going to sit in my thoughts. But those are minor projects that are going to be taking place. Um, we want life back to normal. Get back. It's, 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 it's as simple as simple as that. And because you say get vaccinated doesn't mean you don't believe in God. God, God helps those who help themselves. You know, I, I made this point sometimes to my son, and he's vaccinated. He's 12 years old. Because he asked me about it. He said, you know, Vincent, when I was young and in school, you know, many times I prayed to God to pass an exam, and I ended up failing. You know why I failed? because I didn't study. And so if you do not take matters into your own hands, then this is what's going to happen. Unfortunately, we've had too many deaths for this to wedding. And I don't know how else, because I get emotional about it, because we really need to, we're doing an interview with NASA. You know, is this... Is this the way we want it to be for the rest of our lives? Do we want to see our loved ones who do not need to die of COVID? I'm sorry to be so blunt, but we're going, we're going into two years in this pandemic. And yes, the first year was rough because we had no vaccine. And now that we have a vaccine and we have a possible reason to take it, not a possible, we have a reason to take it. It means we're shying away from it. God helps those who help themselves. And because I get vaccinated, does not mean I don't believe in God. Or I don't believe God will help. But we had some Christians that have COVID too. Get vaccinated while I think Mr. C. If I can just ask you one quick question for a situation update. You've practically conquered the, 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 the this 
challenge in terms of getting the transatlantic flight here to St. Vincent. What's next for the Tourism Authority? PM, PM's made it clear, you know, you can't rest on your laurels. Um, you know, it, it, you keep on pushing the boundaries. When when we opened the airport, that was one thing. The day after we opened the airport, February 15th, PM was on the phone to me. When are we getting the airlines? We need to make sure to keep this going. This is part of it. I'm still looking at Air France. I'm still looking at some of the airlines out of Germany. I'm still looking at JetBlue. I'm still looking at different areas for American Airlines to come in, more airlines out of Canada. But as long as we continue to increase the room stock, we'll be okay and we'll get there. But the challenge will always be to get people to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, make people aware of what the destination has to offer. We're still new in the tourism industry compared to other destinations. But we haven't done bad. There hasn't been another Caribbean country that has moved as fast to get international flights when they constructed their international airport as we have in St. Vincent and Grenadines. But as happy as I am about it, we can do better and we will do better. All right. Thank you so very much. All the best. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you as usual for logging on and staying tuned on all of our platforms on Facebook and on YouTube uh, for this here Situation Updates live cam. Uh, of course, my name is JP Shumon and I do ask you to check this out before we jump out. Thank you.